The Nigerian media stand in solidarity against government censorship moves as Nigerian newspapers express their disapproval for the controversial media bills in their respective editorials. And uh, President Muhammad Buhari states that Nigeria is lucky to remain one country. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anakon. A round of media solidarity via major dailies in Nigeria has followed Monday's widely circulated advertorial calling on the government to shut down two controversial media bills at the National Assembly, which are the Nigerian Press Council and the, Nigerian Broadca uh, the National Broadcasting Commission bills. Now, our newspapers in the country expressed their disregard for the bills in their respective editorials on Tuesday, saying that while the media is not averse to regulation, it wants it to be done without undermining its independence. The sponsor of the controversial bills, Shegun Odebumi, has now stated that the House has agreed to suspend the bills so that lawmakers would have time for proper consultations over the bill. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Chris Isiguzo. He is the president of the Nigeria Union of Journalists. And, of course, we have Adura Tomi Bolade and Femi D. Amele, both broadcast journalists. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Isiguzo. Thank you. So let me go straight to the first point. We, we all talk about press freedom, and, and we know that this is a major component of you know, our democracy worldwide. I mean, every country talks about uh, the need for press freedom for those who do not have it. And for those who have it, they try to continue to you know, champion it. But um, why do you think that the Nigerian government, inclusive, I'm talking about the executive, the legislature, um, why do you think they're trying so hard to uh, you know, suppress that press freedom that we supposedly uh, have? Well, I am not going to draw a conclusion that the government has deliberately set out to suppress press freedom. I will not align with that school of thought. Rather, I would concern myself with steps taken by the legislature to undermine free speech. That the move to amend the Nigeria Press Council Act we took time to look at the provisions in that, uh, in that bill, rather, and uh, we felt that uh, it was a deliberate attempt to undermine democratic governance because key features of democracy include free speech, press freedom, respect for rule of law, once you don't allow this to thrive, then democracy cannot be said to be effective. And that's why the Nigerian Press Organization, which includes the NUJ, the Guild of Editors, the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, we came together and we said, we will not accept this deliberate onslaught against the Nigerian media. In the past three days, you must have discovered that we've been demonstrating our opposition to this uh, voyage by Olushegu Otebumi. Thank God yesterday, while I was on a program with him, he accepted that they were going to suspend the obnoxious deals. But we are not comfortable with that because we feel that they should completely drop it. You cannot be talking about a bill which would ultimately make impact on critical stakeholders, including the AUJ Guild and publishers. And you didn't deem it necessary to engage them, to interface with them, to discuss with them. You just launched. You ambushed us. 
And we will say, no way, we will not accept it. So long as they've decided to bring the bill to the public, we decided to also resist the bill uh, appearing in the public. That's what we have just done. So any attempt by anybody to undermine free speech, to pigeonhole the media, to gag the press, will not be acceptable to us. And that's the, 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 what we have clearly demonstrated in what we did on the 12th, on the 13th, and we'll continue to do it. We are sustaining it. And uh, I'm happy they have at least consented to suspend it. I believe that they are going to do the needful by throwing away that obnoxious deal. I'm, 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 I'm very interested in the fact that, you know, all the pages of the National Dailies um, in Nigeria had the same cover page, had the same, same messaging, you know, taking a stand of sorts. But of course, the, the same could not be said for the other, you know, part of the NUJ, which is the broadcast media. Uh, we, we didn't also see them, you know, show their solidarity uh, of sorts because we saw just the print doing this. Um, why do you think that the broadcast media did not be, become part of this solidarity or take this stand as you have uh, as print well, media? Well, well, thank you. I don't agree with you because in the past three days, the Nigerian broadcast media have been up to task in also replicating our views in their programs. Like what you are doing now, you are all also discharging your own responsibility. What we have published on the front pages of newspapers in the last 48 hours, 72 hours, that's exactly what you're doing. In the past 48 hours, I have featured in not less than 15 broadcast stations, radio, television. And the same thing I'm doing, my colleagues in the guild, in the uh, uh, MPAN, they are doing the same thing, which means we are all together in this uh, effort to resist a deliberate attempt to gag the media industry. Hmm. Like I said, the Nigerian press organization does not include the broadcast media. We have the broadcasting organization of Nigeria. We are working out a template where we are going to come together, the print media, the broadcast media, so that we have one central umbrella that will be able to speak for the Nigerian media generally. Hmm. We are working that out. But in the interim, while we are trying to fashion out that strategy, we have to continue to launch out so our government will hear our voice. So now we don't begin to try to harmonize and all that, and we'll miss the point. We have to really express ourselves very clearly. And I'm happy that government is listening. As we speak, the presidency has washed his hands off the bill. As we speak, the Minister of Information have done the same thing. What this means is that the executive has said they are not part of it. Now it is left for the legislature to also do the needful. If you say you want to regulate the media, we will not accept it. Go and regulate the medical profession. Go and regulate the law profession. Go and regulate engineers. Go and regulate quantity surveyors. What are they concerned about the media? As we speak, for the medical profession, we have the, uh, the, de the Medical and Delta, uh, uh, Dental Council that regulates medical profession. We have the, 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 the Legal Aid Council that also substantially regulates mm. the legal profession. You have the Society of Engineers, you have Corrin, that regulates engineering. You have that one that regulates surveillance. Why are they bothered about the media? Why must government take control of the media? We will not accept it. Okay, let's take a let's take a, a look at government's sincerity, um, and of course, put it side by side with the several similar kinds of bills that have come in the same guise, you know, of trying to either regulate the media or social media. We've seen this come up many times. And the government is still saying that they're not responsible for it. Now the National Assembly has said they're suspending it or they're putting it aside because they want to 
do some consultations. But I ask you, as a journalist who has obviously worked in this country for so many years and you have liaised with governments, um, you know, past and present, should we take the government for their word when they say that they're not responsible, including the information minister, when all of the handwriting, especially uh, the fact that the um, NBC uh, is going to be somewhat um, handled or overseen by the information commissioner, I, I, and that bill gives the information uh, minister, I beg your pardon, so much powers. If there's so much handwriting on the wall and the federal government is saying, the executive is saying, oh, it's just a bill that is being sponsored. We know that bills can be sponsored by a person, but then, of course, that person can be fronting for anybody. We're not making accusations, well, but what is the sincerity of government judging from the precedents that these governments have had, past and present? I will not speak for government. But what I want to tell you is that the Holy Book says, a thousand will fall by your right hand. Several other tens of thousands will, will appear on your left, but none shall come near you. As many times as they come up with bills aimed at silencing the media, as many times they will fail. You will agree with me that the social media bill has failed. The hate speech bill has failed. Mm. This one too will fail. We have laws, pieces of legislation that will substantially take care of such issues that they are bringing up. The issue of fake news, the issue of libel, the issue of sedition, the issue of hate speech. We have the Cyber Crime Act of 2015. Even though we are not too comfortable with that, but it's a law and it is there. We have law on libel. We have law, a law on sedition. We have laws that take care of fake news. All they need to do as a legislature is to activate these laws. If there are a need to review them, that is why we have a legislature. So whether they are sincere or not, I don't want to double into it. So, All Mr. Sugudo, so, you're telling me that you'd rather prefer that we have a review of our media laws than actually get a new bill that totally changes things. You're saying that, especially for the cyber, uh, cyber crime laws, you're thinking that maybe we should review them. So if, if, if you are thinking this, what is the media or the NUJ alongside, uh, you know, the, the other journalists doing to press upon whoever it is that is on the Committee on Information to push a bill like that or push for a review of some of these, you know, laws that you think are, have become moribund? Well, like I said earlier on, if the legislature wants to review existing laws, if those laws... They're not the ones who are practicing journalism in Nigeria. If you feel that a law that is regulating your industry, your part uh, or, or, or your work, shouldn't you be the ones to bring up the idea? They're, they're legislators. They have loads of things to legislate on. But if, if it pinches you where you... I mean, you're well, the one who wears the well, shoe. Well, shouldn't you be the one have, making making these... Uh, bringing the ideas forward to the National Assembly? We have, we have tried this uh, strategy in the past. And then when Abike Dabri was in the House of Representatives, an attempt to come up with uh, what you're talking about uh, failed along the line because stakeholders could not agree. As it stands now, the NUJ is also tinkering with the Journalism Enhancement Bill. And when we are done packaging it, of course we we'll go through relevant committees in the House, in the National Assembly, to get them passed. We are doing that. We are not unmindful of the fact that we have some of these things that we need to tidy up, send them up, to make the media practice stronger, more formidable, you know, free from some of these challenges that stare us in the face every other now, every time, and now and then. So we are conscious of that fact. But in the interim, we must look at what government is doing. If they think they have things they need to do to review existing laws, it's a question of engaging, interfacing, meeting with stakeholders. We should be able to operate as one. 
not the uh, operating as as cost. So does that mean that does that mean that the do, does that mean that the media in Nigeria, whether it's print, whether it's the traditional or social, does that mean that there's no cohesion, there is no synergy of sorts? And you're saying that because you started by saying the stakeholders did not agree. So does it mean that your house is divided against itself and that's why you cannot come to an agreement of sorts to push forward I, I, your demands I, I, I on the floor of the National that, Assembly? And I will not uh, double into well, that. Well, please explain anyway. yourself because you said the stakeholders need to be in agreement. Who are these stakeholders? I said that the deal by Abdike Dabri, who is a journalist, didn't fly because certain segments of stakeholders didn't agree with the content then. That's what I said. I didn't say that we are not working together. So Abike Dabri is no longer is no longer on the floor of the National Assembly. And we're in 2021. Shouldn't we have continued to talk about this issue and continue to liaise with these stakeholders to come to some form of agreement? Why are we still talking about the fact that it failed and that we have folded our arms to wait until now? that the National Assembly has pushed another bill for us to speak up. Well, I've noted what you said. You are trying to put words in my mouth, but I think my points are very clear. Well, I, I'm, not, I, I'm just following what you said, and I'm saying we're in 2021. That one failed. And if you feel that these laws need to be amended and whatever happened then did not sit well, you have to have some form of continuous... Well, conversations me, and liaison. You, you have enough time for us to engage tonight. Let me tell you, as we speak, the MPO is in court challenging the existing MPC Act. We won at the court of first instance and we lost at the appellate court. And uh, now we have challenged the judgment of the appeal court, which is now at the Supreme Court. And that's why we said, instead of trying to circumvent the process, the legislature should operate by rules. That's exactly what's happening here. We are following the thing uh, as it should be followed at the Supreme Court. Now, the legislature wants to circumvent the process by coming with a bill. We said, no, we must respect the laws of the land while we are also discussing. I guess you understand me now. Well, I get you. Uh, so going forward now that, because you started also by saying that you, expressing the sentiment that you do not agree with the suspension and you think that the bill should be jettisoned totally. Uh, if the bill um, is... I mean, because it's suspended doesn't mean that they might not vi revisit it. But going forward, um, do you, how, how do you think that we should, the media space in Nigeria should be governed? Let's not forget that we still have the Twitter ban hanging over our heads. And of course, uh, yesterday the, uh, in the news, the presidency talked about the move to um, also regulate WhatsApp and the rest of them. Um, how do you think that the media space in Nigeria should be handled, especially under this administration and going forward? I, I didn't get that. How do I think what? How do you think the media space should be governed in Nigeria, being that Nigeria somewhat is the big brother of Africa, and when it comes to free, free speech and you know, the freedom of the press, uh, most nations look to us because there's a certain level of freedom that we enjoy in the country. But going forward, how do you think that the media space should be governed in Nigeria and regulated? Well, I know that we have our own internal... Uh, a regulatory process for the AUJ, for the guild, for the MPAN. We have our own laid down rules on how to treat any form of infraction by members. The fact that a doctor has committed an infraction will not make uh, the government to shut the medical and dental council. It doesn't happen that way. Definitely, you will have some people that will step out of, out of line. It's normal. But we continue to insist and instill discipline in the practice 
So while we are trying to come up with other improved laws, we have our own internal mechanism for uh, uh, taking care of every member. Those things are there. So government should not be in a haste to stifle the media space. We, as professionals, as practitioners, we should be allowed to regulate ourselves as it is the practice okay. in other clients. If you are talking about social media, it's a different thing altogether. We have WhatsApp, we have Facebook, Instagram, and the rest of them. If you go to other developed clients, they don't regulate the end user. If you say that uh, the uh, uh, foreign rights should not be imported into the country, all you need to do is to close the borders, monitor the borders, make sure that they are not uh, they don't come into the country. Not when somebody has succeeded in bringing it to his shop in one scruffy village, you now go there and impound. That's not the way it is done. You don't regulate end users. If you want to regulate, regulate the owners of the platform. WhatsApp has got an owner. Facebook has got an owner. Instagram has an owner. Regulate them at that level. You don't regulate end the user. Okay. There's no place it is done. Okay. Well, let, 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 just to push you a bit further before we go. Um, yes, you've talked about the fact that we have internal ways of dealing with our journalist of correcting, dealing with slander, libel, all of those things. Uh, but then, of course, there is that say about the brown envelope. These days, they no longer are brown. They're now white. Um, how, how do we also reform and repurpose the average journalist to the average Nigerian? Because, you know, some people would say that our journalists have become you know, tools in the hands of politicians, it's a say. I do not agree with it because I'm not a tool in the hands of any, you know, politician. You uh, no, no, I'm going somewhere. Just hold on. I'm going no, somewhere. Go yes. But how do we also rebrand the average journalist in Nigeria um, so that people do not see us in that light any longer? And do you think that we are, as journalists, um, a threat to the Nigerian politician and I'm talking about every politician well, in Nigeria. I, I, ordinarily, I would have asked you if you are a member of the uh, Nigeria Union of Journalists. I don't want to go into that. Maybe we'll answer. talk about some time, some other time. But for those who are members of the union, we have programs, training, retraining programs, advocacy programs, capacity building programs. And these programs are aimed at, you know, preparing journalists, practitioners, to be able to cope with the dynamics in the system, global dynamics, global reality. We have such programs that are on. We, you know, how do we cope with time. global? How do we cope with global realities when we're poorly paid, poor, poorly enumerated, and so you hear excuses like, "Well, you have to make money." Um, on the side to survive. And so you see people taking monies from people to write stories well, or I asking. Not, uh, I have not seen people taking that. You are talking about brown envelope. Well, I, I'm not I, don't, I, don't expect, I don't expect you, Mr. Stiguzo, to admit on national TV that. that you if are aware of anybody, it. I do not expect you, you to, I do not expect you as the NUJ president to admit on national TV that there are journalists who take uh, kickbacks or brown envelopes. I am envelopes. not aware of that. Exactly, and I knew that you were going to give me that answer. But how do we? How do? And when I asked that question, I was asking when I said rebrand, and I, I talked about how do we repurpose, because we we need to be playing on 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 the same level uh, on the international space. That as you have mentioned, training and retraining is not enough. What about the welfare of the average journalist in Nigeria? Do you, is that taken into consideration? Whether they work for private or for I public? I can assure you that as a union, we are taking that very seriously, the issue of welfare, because you cannot uh, impose rules on a hungry man, because a hungry man is an angry man. And oftentimes, a hungry man does not operate by rules. So we are conscious of that fact. The issue of welfare 
is the very, very uh, 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 necessary in our engagement. And we are doing that. The issue of poor remuneration, we are taking them up. The issue of epileptic remuneration, we are taking them up. These are issues that are on the front burner. Okay. And we are not treating them with levity. Well, I want to say thank you very much, Mr. Sikuzo, for joining us. He is the national chair, president of the Nigeria Union of Journalists. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. Well, thank you all for being a part of this conversation. We'll take a short break. And when we return, President Buhari speaks on the unity of Nigeria in the face of a plethora of challenges facing the country. Stay tuned.